Welcome to Let's Talk About It. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. I was, you know, I was seven years old and I was molested by my father. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. You know, after a lifetime of trying to figure out what was wrong with me, thinking I'm, I, like I did something wrong or I did something about it, I, I, one day I just... Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Mark King Film Productions, professional audio and video editing services. We provide podcast editing, video ads, social media ads, wedding videos and more. Follow us on Instagram Mark King Film Productions for all your editing needs. Mark King Mark King Film Productions. Today we have a special show. You know, we all got secrets. And this lady, this young lady I'm about to introduce, had to overcome a lot of secrets. And I also got to hear about how she is like a genius. She has a genius level IQ. I can't wait to hear about that. She has overcome hardship, bad relationships, probably one of the biggest secrets of her life to where she is right now. And she is on a journey of being good. Well, she is good. You can tell. Look, look at that. She's a very beautiful young lady. Kimberly, how are you today? Should I call you Kim or Kim? You know what? Kim is good for the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Kimberly right. is like if you're formal, Kim's good. <laughs> <laughs> So first and foremost, like, how's your day going so far? You know what? Today's been an excellent day. It's Friday, and I work Monday through Friday, so I'm, like, happy. Like, it's the end of my day. The yeah. weekend's coming. Football game Sunday. I'm excited. Oh, God, it's Super Bowl. Oh. <laughs> Even though neither one of my teams are playing. Oh, uh, yeah, neither mine's mine's either, but you know where it is. Should have been your team, just saying. Yeah, no, 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 no. Straight out of Philly, because, you know, we're going to get this another time. <laughs> Kim, you have... You've lived with a secret that you finally came out with. You've done, you've gone through a lot of hard, hard heartaches and hardships and bad relationships, which a lot of people can relate to. Trust me, I, I can too. But we're going to start off, we're going to go back to the beginning, to your childhood. Um, I'm going to let you tell it. Uh, um, I know you was, this happened when you was seven? First, yep, I was seven. Seven years old. Kim's going to tell you about one secret that she had to overcome throughout many, many years that I would like to give the floor to you. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, after a lifetime of trying to figure out what was wrong with me, thinking I'm I like I did something wrong or I did something about it. I, I one day I just I just I was in a group discussion and this came out and I mean I've talked about it before but not like that with strangers. Not exactly. with not with people that you don't even know, right? Um yeah. but I was, you know, I was seven years old and I was molested by my father, um, who I thought was my father at the time, but I learned later on. He's actually my adopted father not my biological father. That's a whole separate secret for later on. Yeah. And then um, and then again when I was 10, and then again when I was 12. So, and I remember I used to justify, you know, when I would like justify in my head, well, you know, thank goodness it wasn't like repeatedly or that he didn't, you know, completely rape me, but that doesn't justify what he did was still bad. Like he still did bad things to his exactly. own daughter. And yes. so, I'm like, well, at least he didn't do this, at least he didn't do that. No, there's no least to do none of that. So anyway, so I finally one day when I was 12 years old, when he tried to, he was, I was laying down watching a movie and he came over to lay down and he went to go grab me and I'm like, stop, don't you dare touch me. Don't come near me and don't touch me. Um, I was funny, growing up enough, I'm big enough. Cause when I was a little girl, he told me, don't ever tell your mom cause she's not going to believe you. You know, all the, all the BS lies that yeah. they tell you to say, yeah, to, trust to, us. to intimidate you not to tell. Mm -hmm. Um, and he'd been drinking and um, he could smell the alcohol in his breath and all that stuff. So my mom was at a meeting and when she came home, I was already in bed when, by the time she got home. So I was hiding out in my bedroom after that. And I, I go, mom, I need to talk to you. So I had called her in my room and I told her 
mom, this is what happened tonight. And this is not the first time it happened. Then I told her that dad told me never to tell you, but this also happened. So I gave her the whole story of what happened. And when I was seven years old, I'm like, how did nobody know? Like my, I bled in my pajamas. Like, you know, I wasn't really like, you know, like, how did you not see my, my bloody pajamas when I was seven? But that's, so all these things that happened. So I'm telling you what happened. And I'm not going to go into the gory details right now. I got you. Um, anyway, so she made me come into the, she says, come here. She had me go into their bedroom, to mm-hmm. their bedroom, and confront her again and tell her what happened in front of my dad. He gets out of the bed. He starts, he goes to the closet, starts packing clothes. Oh, this is bullshit. Excuse my language. This is BS. No, you can, yeah, you can say whatever you want. You, go, you curse. Is, go he's like cursing up a storm and, you know, packing up his bags, ready to leave the house. And then, now, mind you, I'm a 12-year-old girl, so now I'm thinking it's my fault. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. right. Um, and so, of course, then we go to therapy. He's still in my, and I, he left for a little while, but he came back into the house. And um, so I had to deal with all this. Even um, when I was 19 years old, I was still living at home trying to get the heck out of there, let me tell you. Um, but whenever he would drink, I would leave the house. I couldn't hang. I was terrified he would come after me. Right. So, um, so I, I would, hang out with my cousins anywhere but there to like I was able to get a job and, and get out um mm-hmm. and but so we went to therapy so I'm thinking you know because you're taught then that by the way therapy means you went to the doctor and you got fixed like taking the medicine and you're better right now, wait, 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 so, okay, but you, you, you say you went to therapy at what 19 I was 18 and 19 years old I was my mom made me go to therapy but, but, but at 12 when you talked to your mom and he, he talked did, did your what stepdad, right? Did, he's, did, yeah, he, he adopted me legally later, but yeah, he's he's my stepdad, yes. So when he packed up, did he leave or he still stayed? No, he left the house and he was gone for two weeks. Left the house for two weeks. And yep. so so within that two weeks, like how how was like what was the conversation with you and your mom? Like um, you know, see, this is part of the that I remember trying to bring it up to her. She's like, you know what, we're we've already dealt with this, we've already talked about it, you've already told me. She says, We don't need to bring it up again. I was like right. right, and this, by the way, was a pattern. Even when I got older, when I was a young adult, and I want to talk about something that came up, she's like, "Why are you bringing this dirt up again? Like, why are you bringing it up? Like, that was just how we were operated around the household." So two weeks later, my dad comes home, and actually, we all went. To, we all went to family therapy. Then, when I was about thirteen years old, so now I'm about thirteen. It was right right yeah. around my birthday. Yeah. How weird it's right around my birthday now too. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, yeah. so. It's about the same amount of same period of time in my life. So, you know, we go to therapy and then I went again when I was a little bit later. Um, now, fast forward to, um, I wrote down notes so I wouldn't get lost. Sorry about my story. So, okay, you know, okay. so later on, you know, I, I'm a survivor of being, I was being molested by my dad. He was my adopted dad, but I didn't know. Um, and when I became an adult, it affected me in so many ways through that. You know, I believed in order to get love, I had to be physical. I was yeah. always looking. And then I'm always looking for approval from the very parents that hurt me the most. Yeah. I didn't know how to trust any humans. I trusted nobody. So when right. I would get involved in a relationship, I would, I was like a dual um, conundrum. Like I would want to like, like, please love me. But you know what? Let me sabotage the heck out of this relationship because I don't trust you. Right. right? So I would, th- I would sabotage every relationship I ever had, whether it was a good one or a bad one. And I was also attracting people that were not good for me. You know, they yeah. didn't really they didn't really want to be with me. They just wanted to have sex with me. Yeah. And um, so, you know, in my head, that's how you get love is by being physical, right? That's that was how I. Um, and I I Did eventually you start this like nineteen era, but this is just when you was nineteen, right? No, I mean, yeah, now I'm in my early twenties now. At this oh, point. okay, gotcha. Trying yeah. to you know move on, go to college, meet some people. Um, and then I didn't even get married, Lou, until I was in my fifties, till I was 50 years old. Really? That's, I had a relationship for a long time and I was trying to pretend to be somebody I wasn't with this man. <laughs> and I kept waiting for him to propose and waiting for him. We were together off and on for like 10, 12 years. And he never asked, not once did he ever ask me. Um, and he finally said, and then the other thing that was the issue, and this is, this is, this was big. He's like, you know what? I can't marry you. You continue to be obese. I'm a, I'm a plus size woman. I've been mm-hmm. full figured um, my whole life. Um, yeah. And I didn't realize until when he said that to me, I was like, what, 
what? Like how, like how, really? <laughs> so what, you've just been playing with me the past 12 years? Like, what do you mean? I'm not good enough to marry, but I'm good enough to be in a relationship with. And that just triggers so many different things. And that's when I finally realized, now, intellectually, I remember talking about this. Remember I told you, intellectually, I'm smart enough to know that, yeah. you know what, this is all, this is wrong. This is so wrong. And I know that, you know, yes, I. but what I didn't realize, but I can articulate it now, because now I've learned some things, but when I look back, you know what, Lou, I, it was, it's a protective mechanism to stay heavy was keeping people at, away from me. You know what I mean? Really? In my head, if I stay heavy, then that man's not going to want to be with me. That, so that, you wanted um, to stay heavy. So see, you thought that was your way to keep everybody keep away. people at distance. Yep. Really? Seriously. And, 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 and when did you start that process? Did, at early, er, er, do, you, do you do it at earlier age or you did it at it? No, I didn't even I didn't address that until um twenty years ago. I finally said, you know what? This no, this is not good. This is not right. Yes, I'm a heavy person, but that's not that's not a healthy type of love. And so I started, you know, taking like reading books, self help books, you yeah. know. So um, and so I'm aware, you know, what this is being heavy has nothing to do. So that's when I started learning, you know, what these are, these are all based on trauma. Now, remember, Lou, you and I talked about this a little bit. We didn't use that word trauma. Yeah. I, I was a child. I grew up in this. I was born in the 60s. We didn't use the word trauma. We didn't talk about therapy. We didn't talk about any of these things. You know, none of these things were, even my mom was still alive at the time. And I would talk to her mom, you know, and I told her what happened. And this man broke up with me because I'm too fat. And she's like, well, you know, why don't you go on a diet? That was her answer. Now, now, now Kim, let me ask you this. Really, this is the answer. Just go on a diet. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm letting you vent this story out. When you, you kept this in there. Only, only you and your mom knew about the first part with your dad, right? Just kept that, right? And then you went into a relationship. Did you let? So you let no other relationship know that that happened to you before. Did anybody know? Right. Any relationship I was in, I never told about. I never said this is what happened to me until um, I met my husband, my now ex-husband. But yeah, ex-husband. Now, so so for our years, like let's say, okay, so you was with different relationships. So you felt that you needed love, right? And you you it stemmed from from what your past, right? That's what you're saying. Yep, I needed love. I needed attention. I wanted to be just like you know validated that I was okay, but in the, in the relationship I was in, the long-term one, I wasn't in a lot of relationships, but I'm always seeking love or I would meet somebody and I would I would be sexual way too fast. Never did I tell them, you know, I have trust issues. I never did I tell them I was traumatized as a child. I never did I tell them I was molested, that I had to lie about stuff. My own mother told me, don't tell your brothers, don't tell your uncles, don't tell anybody what happened. This is between us. Like, nobody knew all this. And so I believe that was what I was supposed to do. I was, like, honoring my parents. Like, it was like a weird situation. Like, okay, I'm going to honor their secrets, but I also don't like them very much. You know, like, I'm like, I felt like I owed them some kind of a thing. Um, but Do you feel I like she, she was embarrassed by it? I was very embarrassed. And then I thought I was something wrong with me. Like, there must be something wrong with me. Yeah. Like, why was I the one that got hurt? Why am I, am I I thought I was, you know, what's the word? Um, I thought I was defective. Really? Yeah. You know, like, I, I must be defective. Like, and I was a beautiful young lady. I'm a beautiful older lady, but I didn't see her. I didn't look at me and go, wow, you know what? You're amazing. I didn't know that person then. I could never say those words then. I say it now, but I couldn't say it then. I didn't see your that. Mom's not here. That, 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 you, you say your mom's not, not here anymore, right? Yeah, she passed 13 years ago. And um, my biological, my, my dad, excuse me, um, passed away three years ago. Okay. Now, when as you got older, did you try to like talk to her about uh, what happened to you in, in the very beginning as you got older? Or did I she did. still would say, I didn't want to talk about it? I tried to talk about it over the years and she would say, there's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. Now, they were at one point, she was going to divorce this man when I was about 19. And um, I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like, like finally, like, I feel like someone's finally sticking up for me, right? But it wasn't yeah. about me. But they yeah. ended up getting back together. They ended up not getting divorced. They stayed together until she passed away. Uh, and I asked her one day, like a year later, I go, I thought you were going to divorce that man. 
And I said that yeah. man. I didn't say my dad. I go at that man. Exactly. Exactly. And she's like, well, no, he never brought it up, so we decided to stay married. Um, <laughs> and then when she passed away, I thought he would go back. And he actually then um he did stop drinking at some point during my lifetime. You know, he stopped drinking the alcohol, he stopped being a, a jerk. He was a jerk. Um, he was also, you know, verbally abusive to my mother. Um but he stopped doing those things at some point um, when my brother had a child, my nephew was born. And all of a sudden, this whole different person just started growing out of nowhere. Um, and then he, when he stopped drinking, and then his own parents passed away. So I learned from him and I learned from one of his sisters that he was, he was hurt as a child. He was molested as a child. I'm like, oh, that explains so many things. And I also learned that he wasn't my biological father. He was my adopted father. My biological father um, died when I, you know, I was a baby. So um, I was like, I don't know why that gave me some relief to know that I wasn't blood related to these people. <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> like I, that's, that was a terrible thing. And then I, then I felt guilty because I felt that way. Like all these different things I have dealing with. So, um, and then I finally got married and uh, I got divorced. And then I learned something else after I was divorced. And you're not even going to believe this, dude. What's that? This person that I married, the one who gave helped me give birth to my beautiful daughter, mm -hmm. violated his own daughter, his oldest daughter, not my daughter, but his oldest daughter. Oh. I'm like, how? What? 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 Really? <laughs> like, oh. how? How did I not know that this person did that to his own daughter? And I married that man. Yep. So oh, I was oh, like. Oh, oh. Yeah. All right, so. all, right, all right. So when you met your husband, matter of fact, right, let's go back. But but before we get your husband, when you start having relationships, right? And you, you say you were looking for love, like how did you first sabotage? Like, like, like what, what did you do to, to get them to, to sabotage relationships? Like, 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 give me some examples. You know what? We you'll hear this term now on the internet all day long, every day that we're toxic. Like I was very toxic. I would throw accusations. I would, you know, act really petty. I would say, you know, like, oh, is that your girlfriend? Like, I would throw lot. I would like say, oh, you must be cheating. Like, I would throw language like that to the person. Um, I would act pretty crazy about some some things. I got very jealous really easy. I was very right. insecure. I needed reassurance all the time. Um, and that's how I would sabotage my own relationships is by acting um, from a point of. Um, being toxic and not being healthy and not talking you know what i really feel this way when you do that or i didn't talk that way then i just would okay. throw accusations um mm. or i would make things difficult on purpose and i would retaliate like if they did something to hurt me i would turn around and hurt them back um like for example um if they hurt me by i don't know, lying to me then i would go out on a date with somebody else like that type of sabotage well i'll show you I'm going to go out with this guy over here. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> like, so, and I didn't even want to go out with the other guy. I was just doing it to say, well, see, somebody else wants me, you know, that, okay. that type of behavior. So, how, how, how many relationships did you have before you got married? Um, okay. well, four, real, main, four yeah. main relationships. The first one I was, when I was 21 years old, mm -hmm. then the second person that I waited for, for all those years. Okay. And then the third one, that was just a couple of years. Then I was single for a really long time. I'm talking mm -hmm. for a long time. And I met my husband. Um, way, we didn't we did not get married when I first met him. We had a daughter together. We, we were not married. We pretended to be married. Um, yeah. And I wasn't really, I wasn't, and I was 40 years old when she was born. So I wasn't even expecting to have a baby. I just was being a grown adult and I had been single for a long time. So, um, and I actually broke up with him after she was a year. And I'm like, you know, let's try to be a family. And it didn't work. So I you broke up with him. So I broke mm -hmm. up with him. Um, and then I actually then I had my fifth relationship with somebody who I absolutely was the first time I ever felt like a grown up. And this was the most kindest, loving man I've ever known in my life. He was older than me, too. He was like 13 years older. And he was so calm with me. And he was the second person that I told about my story. Now, um, now, 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 first, right, so when you met the older Jim, right, did you feel love? You felt wanted at that time, right? I did. And um, he actually kind of, 
he he alluded to getting some help and talking about it. Um, but we broke up as well. <laughs> um, Why? We Why'd you break up with the good guy? I know, right? You know what? I, I just talked about this recently because God and I, God's been like, what were you thinking? So he was, he's old fashioned man. And I just broke up with the, the you know, the, the father and I'm trying to yes. be a single mom. And he's trying to like, no, I take care of those things. That's my job. I'm the man. I'm supposed to take care of these things. I need you to be more soft. I need you to be more submissive to me in a biblical sense, right? Not in a, not, you know, nothing, don't get all weird, but in a biblical no, way. Like yeah. I'm the father, I'm the parent of the house. So, and we had very different parenting styles. He had two boys that are a little older than my daughter. Yeah. And he was a very strict parent, very strict parent. And he's like, you're not strict enough with your daughter. You're just trying to be her friend. And so I would listen to him try to talk to me. And I took it like he was attacking me. I wasn't listening to him, Lou. I didn't hear him talk. I wasn't listening to his words. I was just feeling like he's attacking me. So mm. what did I do? I picked up an old habit and I retaliated and I broke and off. You did the him. toxic thing, right? You did the toxic I pushed them away. Like, get uh -huh. away from me. You're too healthy for me. <laughs> I and and he was the only one I've ever felt like. I felt God's love with this person. There's more to this story, so just wait till y'all hear this okay, part. Okay, okay, okay. So now, um, and so, but so he he put up with me for a while. Though we 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 did we actually went out for a while until we it was like a couple years, and then we broke up because I wasn't being. He's like, I need it. I need a good mother for my boys, and you're not acting that way. So when we broke up, I got back together with my daughter's father because it was safe. I thought it was safe. This is the weirdest thing I'm going to tell you. I'm like, you know what? Because I tried to meet other people and I was really feeling uncomfortable. I didn't want anyone to hurt my own daughter. I was very protective of my daughter, by the way. Gracias. Very protective of her. I didn't want her to be hurt. So what did I do? Like, I'm going to go back to where it's safe. Now I know I've intellectually I've learned that that meant it was familiar, not yeah. not, not good, just familiar. We've so all been there, Kim. Trust me. We've all been there. So I went back to the, the, the familiar place, even though it was bad, mm -hmm. and then married that man. Now, okay. while, while this is when it all started. So one day I'm in the shower and we were not in a loving marriage. We had not been intimate in a year at some point. And I'm like, what, what am I doing? I'm taking a shower. And I'm off the F word as loud as I could. Like this epiphany. It was not an epiphany. God was talking to me. He's like, you know what, Kimberly, you're going to finally listen to me. This is what I have to tell you. And I wasn't really a big believer, but I, I've never where is this coming from? Yeah, I got he you. said, I put this man back in your life to show you some things. You are not healthy and you're not being loving to yourself. Mm. This man cannot love you because you don't love you. I swear, these are, these are words in my head. Oh, words yeah. from God. He's like, you are not loving yourself. He goes, you're worthy of more. You deserve better. He goes, all those negative voices that have been in your head are so wrong. You are the most beautiful, amazing person I've made, I made you to be amazing. I made you to be beautiful. And I need you to stop doing these bad, unhealthy things. I need you to get away from this man. Mm -hmm. What? And he's, he's a mirror. I want you to see where you're defective. I want you to see that you're not being loving. So how'd you find out? I talked to him. I said, you know what? We got married for the wrong reasons. I, I he goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> He knew. I knew. So, um, how did you find out about him and his daughter? Oh, I didn't find this out till recently, by the way. Oh, to recently? Recently, yes. Um, like it was confirmation that I made the right move. It was confirmation that I made the right decision at the time, even though so came years later. In the shower, you was in the shower, and, and, and you felt God was telling you like you had to get out of this situation. It's time for you to stop these. It's time to stop. It's time to get help. It's time to do something better. It's time okay. to start talking to me. I need for you to talk to me every day. I need for you to build a relationship with me. And I need for you to quit worrying about these other people. All right. So stop so, stop so, being in these bad relationships. You don't need to be with a man to be happy. I'm telling so you, this you conversation that, right. was huge. I'm so, sorry, so, what? So, 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 so you decided to leave him. I did. And then what was your next step after that? Like, like what age was you then? Now I'm... 
God. I'm 55 okay. years old now. <laughs> I've been a whole life now. Yeah. So you have to let we have to learn these things younger. We have to talk about these things younger. We have to talk about these things when we're 20, not when we're 50. Anyway, um, so to follow up on the the man I love story. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So after my divorce was final, about a year later, it was snowing outside, and I I don't know why. I remember this man, his name was Tony Mall, and I remember like, oh my, it was snowing, which is unusual where I live. I live in Vegas. When it, it snows like once every whenever, right? I'm like, Vegas. and it stayed on the ground. I was in Vegas at the time. <laughs> and I'm like, it's snowing. And for some reason, I go, I pick up my phone and I'm trying to figure out because I had deleted this number. I hadn't talked to this man since way before I got married, right? Yeah. And I, I went on Facebook and I found his phone number. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I called him. I go, and he's like, happy birthday. Like he remembered my birthday and he knew it was me calling. <laughs> he picked up That's the awesome. phone. So we talked a little bit. This was February. My birthday's in two weeks. Um, and so He's like, well, when can we? He was in California time and he traveled a lot for his job. And he's like, well, you know, what? let's pick a time when we can get together. I really want to talk to you mm-hmm. some more. Um, I want to hear about what happened with your divorce and I want to hear how you're doing. And what have you been doing since you got divorced? And so I yeah. actually told him about, I go, well, I actually I went back to therapy. I go, but I also been going to a fellowship group. I got more right. involved in talking with God and talking right. to God. Um, and going to um, a women's fellowship and a mixed fellowship group as well, um, which, which has been probably one of the most helpful things, more than therapy even. Got it. Um, so we finally got together and we, we, we were able to meet. I had to go for work and he was able to so pick the time when we could be together in August, a few months you know later. Um, mm-hmm. And he, he, he had this conversation with me after all these years I've known him, like 13 years. And he tells me, you've always been the one. You have been, not any woman has ever compared to you. And this is what he said to me. He's like, you know what? You are a queen and you need to behave like a queen. You've got to quit picking these jokers. The person that you married was an absolute worst. Yeah. <laughs> he said, and then he divulged all these beautiful, loving things in our conversation. And he had been seeing somebody. So it's like, you know, I'm still seeing what's her name and. Um, he goes, but I'm telling you, I can't do it anymore. He goes, if you're available, I can't. I have to be with you. I've always okay. been you, right? Okay. All right. Because I think I think you're ready for me. <laughs> because I think you're able to be with someone like me. And this is what I this is what I, I I picture our life to look like. And he talked about we talked like logistics and this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm gonna hop on a train, and he was gonna head to Ohio, which is where he's from, to go see his family. And then he was mm-hmm. going to come back to LA and then he was going to come be with me. He goes, and, I, and while I'm gone, I'm going to take care of my business, you know, his relationship business. She worked for his company. So it was, it was more than just being his, his partner. I mean, they, they were business associates as well. So it was, it was complicated. I said, don't worry about it. Um, and no, we didn't sleep together at all. We just worked together during the trip and we enjoyed the, the beautiful San Diego and we Enjoy stayed it. right there on the harbor. It was gorgeous. Okay. okay. And beautiful, beautiful soul. So he gets on the train. I take him to the train station. And when he gets there, he was a little bit sick. And I remember the last his last voice message to me, like, I love you, I love you, I love you. I can't wait for our future to start. Oh boy. I get a call that was on that was a on a Tuesday. On a Friday, I got a call in the middle of the night on Messenger from his brother. I'm like, what the what 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 in the middle of the night? Um, Miss Kim, I'm tired to tell you, but Tony passed away. Ugh. The man had a heart attack. So the man that finally that that loved you, the love that you've been waiting for all your life, the one you were searching for all your life, you guys was going to rekindle. He passed. Yep. Mm-hmm. This happened and what five years ago? This happened three years ago. Three years ago. So, in a uh, weird kind of way, I can't believe. I know I'm smiling, but and I'm trying not to cry. Um, no, you do just give it all up. What but, have you got um, That's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Take your time. So. I'm like, had I listened to God maybe sooner, I mm-hmm. would have had all that time. I wouldn't have been apart from him at that time. I wouldn't have married my daughter's father. I would. Okay. I could have been with this man the whole time, but I had. I was being stubborn. I was being insecure. Mm-hmm. I wasn't being trusting. I wasn't believing God. And um, but you know what? <laughs> I am so grateful. That I got to talk to that man before he passed away. Yes. I'm so grateful I had that 
those we had three days together that were just the most beautiful days and we had beautiful words and it was just a beautiful experience and I'm, I'm like thank you for those three days it gave me peace but think about this kim kim think about this out of all the things you've been through you finally got that love i did even, even it's only for three days i understand i know it sucks but i keep oh you're not lying days. i'm so grateful yeah. for those three days I'm it was no toxic didn't no. have to, you know, get bigger or whatever or none of this stuff like this and that. No, he, he loved, loved me too. exactly the way I looked. He loved exactly. every curve. He loved every dimple, every freckle. That man loved everything about me. Every he's like, you were designed for me. You're perfect just the way you are. You don't need to change anything. And that's all that matters. Yep. And that's I know that matters. kind of love. And you know what? He even told me it's like like, like he knew God was taking him home or something because he's like, you know what? Someday you're you're gonna find if it's not me, if I'm not here for you, your king is coming. And he's gonna look at you like I look at you. He's gonna go, Oh my god, that that's my that that's her. I'm gonna get her. And he goes, You're gonna be happy and healthy. Because I need for you to keep doing what you're doing. And um, I've been working on, you know, emotional um development, trying to get better emotionally, trying to get better. Um How's it going for you? Really good. I've lost right. like, and I also, and I've done the whole diet up and down like my whole life. Everybody goes, well, "Why do you just lose weight?" It's not that easy when you have all this baggage. I believe mm -hmm. or not, as you know, it's not so easy to change habits. Um, but I have been working on um habits, and I've lost some weight. Um, not a lot, but I lost, but it's changing habits, right? A little at a time. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. used to like, I would do like try to do it all at once, and then I would get frustrated when I wouldn't lose the weight. Mm -hmm. I would do it again. I would, I'm like, no. So this time it's about changing my habits. So I'm down about 20 pounds from a year ago. Awesome. Um, Proud of I can, you. I can see my waistline. I'm like, oh, yeah. Girl. <laughs> Atta girl. Atta girl. There you go. I go, well, I can see my... Now, mind you, I have a hard time walking, so it's not so easy to do that. I, my knees are shot. So um, from being overweight all those years, my, I need both my knees need surgery. So, okay. um, But it was just about changing habits, like eating more at home um, instead of eating out. You know, trying not to, and I would always want to go to the sweets. Like that was my go-to, you know, comfort. I was going to yeah, sweets. I got you. I I'm got like, you. stop doing that. I still have sweets, but not like every day. You know, like maybe once you. a week I might grab something, but um, and I drink a ton of water. Yes, of water. yes, I get right here. Trust right me. all day, every day. I'm sucking down the water. There you go. Uh, and vitamins. I take supplements all day, every day. I take a handful of vitamins every day, and you know what? And I talk to God. I start out my day being grateful. I start out my day praying and talking to the big guy up there um, to how he wants me to move. Yeah. How, how does he want me to operate? Um, and also, I've in the past couple of years, I've been talking to other BBWs about being, about just being beautiful and we're queens just the way we are and not to be so hard on ourselves. You know what? So we don't fit a society perfection. I'm not trying to glorify being obese just for those that might hear that. I'm not saying that it's not it's not healthy. I'm aware, but we also have to um, look at why we are. Why are we overweight? You know, why? What is it? Medical? Is it mental? Is it all those things? And don't let society make us feel bad because we are overweight. Because most of us have issues. It's not just being lazy. It's not about being lazy at all. I, I'm on the most. I'm I'm busy all day every day. As you can tell, I have a ton of energy. It's mm. not about being lazy. It's about um, doing what's mentally right first and then we then we follow through with the body all right kim let me ask you this right i, I want you to give a message if you can because i got a feeling somebody's going to relate to your story if you can tell someone who had who had a secret like you how to deal with it how to navigate to it how to bring it out like what after all the years that you've been through everything you went through how would you tell them to like deal with bringing out your secret, being comfortable, like and talking to somebody? How, how would you go about that? Like, like telling them it's okay. It is okay. And I wish we were taught younger. It was okay. Had I probably addressed it 40 years ago, I could be a whole different person. So I'm going to tell you, whoever's listening, that you didn't do anything wrong. The secret is not yours to keep. Your healing is what you need to do. And in order to get to the healing, you have to tell what happened. Because when you speak about what happened, 
then you can speak about the answers to what happened. And there's no person that can judge you. There's no person. Their opinions don't matter. People's opinions don't matter. If they don't like what they heard, that's their business. That's their problem. Don't be worried about what other people think. Be worried about what you think and be worried. You don't have to, you know, embrace a religion if that's, if that's not your thing, but still um, talk about it and get help from where you feel you can get help from. Talk to people who've been through it, maybe talked about, but, um, and you know what, let it out because it's the secret. When you bury the secret, then you start keep doing other things and keep burying it. For me, it was food, right? And sweets and bad habits, bad men, <laughs> bad humans. I kept stuffing stuff back in. And what did it get me? I'm here talking to you at 60 years old, still hopeful that the love of my life is on his way. <laughs> and I could have had all those years already, right? So don't be afraid to say something. And you don't have to tell any everyone, but you do need to tell someone. Someone you trust. Tim, I, I, I tell you right now, I've heard a lot of stories. Now, I'm touched by yours. You know, right, when I came up with, with this, this whole idea uh, um, with this podcast, which I got to offer some, someone else who inspired me how to do it. You know, hearing your story is amazing. Like, you are one amazing. I can tell you that. I No, I'm not bullshitting you. I'm being real. This is real, right? Here. You're an amazing woman for what you went through, what you've overcome. I mean, to where you are now, like, you seem very, very happy. But but, but before, before I go on that one, explain this genius level IQ of yours first. <laughs> I, I I got it. What, what, what is this about? What were you like? You can build rocket ships or shit? What, what do you do? No, actually, isn't that weird? That's a waste of talent. When I was about, um, when I was in second grade, I got tested because, you know, in kindergarten, we're reading those books, those C spot right. run books. And I, I yeah, would like, yeah, yeah. I would got, I got in trouble all the time because I was bored and I wanted to go read the chapter books. Well, no one other kids were reading chapter books. And then we used to do this math. What's the second grade? No, kindergarten. I'm reading chapter books in kindergarten. Kindergarten. And, and these kids are reading C's but run, right? Oh so my by the time I got to second grade, my parents were like, what? And I kept getting in trouble because I wanted to, I was bored. Like I'm bored. So my parents had me tested and sure enough, yep, it's a very high IQ. But I'm also one of those wicked smart people when it comes to, um, I'm a good um, puzzle. I can, I can solve lots of puzzles, right? Yeah. I'm a good puzzle solver. But I also, my daughter will tell you, she's the same way. We're both like, we're, we're like, we know how to work smarter so we can be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> sure. Like I could figure out like, if I could do this three things at once, that means I only have to do this thing one time instead of going back and forth four times. Right. Wow. Not always a good thing. But sometimes it's better to do four things. <laughs> you know? Man, you can teach me some shit because I'm dumb as hell. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm a little dorky and a little book smart but i'm not um i'm not sophisticated with that in other words i didn't like practice you know i didn't go like like that that show numbers i'm not like one of those or, or what's that show scorpions yeah. right where all these yeah, all geniuses yeah. and they're solving yeah, the yeah. whole world no i'm but i'm i'm very logical but i'm also uh, astrological i'm a pisces so i'm very logical on some things and i'm also very emotional so they, they don't always go together but um, I like to solve problems. I like to solve, you know. Um, um, well, guess what you did? Guess what you did, though? You saw solved Joan Brown. I did. Yes, you did. You saw Joan Brown. You did it. it, did, I'm, it, not, it, it I'm not stopping now. <laughs> yeah, and you will keep on grinding. Yep. And you know what? And by you sharing this, you probably, I guarantee, you probably will solve somebody else's problem. I hope so. Especially if it's a young lady, even if, you know, what, even if the secret is not that you were molested or the secret is, you know, you did something bad, whatever the yeah. secret is, you know, whether you made a mistake or somebody mistake, made a mistake to you, it doesn't matter what the secret is. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember even later on in that same secret pattern, uh, I learned that my biological father, you know, is Puerto Rican, somehow Puerto Rican. I'm like, what? Okay. Okay. Born up in a white in a white people house, and I'm I'm like a little darker than everybody else. I'm like, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> there you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that explains a million things. There oh, I'm go. Puerto Rican. Now I get it. There and you I, go. <laughs> and I like and I like flavor, and I like men who are darker than you know. So I'm like, there that you go. So many things. Like, so many things. <laughs> yeah, we're we're a mixed family. And my daughter's mixed too. She's half 
she's half black. So okay. we're a very mixed family. And my family actually has a lot of like, we've all married outside of our, I guess. um, um, so I'm like, oh, that explains so many things. Like the, what, the, what I like, the music, the food, the, the, the people. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah. Um, but yeah, whatever the secret is, don't, don't, it's okay to tell your secret. It's okay to let it out. Matter of fact, I encourage it because had I not kept it in, especially when I was in my early twenties, mm-hmm. I was so ashamed. I thought I was the bad thing. I was not the bad thing. But you're not. And, and they're not will- the bad thing. They're not the bad person. And you've overcome this. You've done everything. Kim, I, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap, wrap this up for a second. But, but, before we go, you got to play my game. Okay, I'm ready. got to play my game. I told you about it. got to <laughs> play my game. got to play my game. It's, but you smart, so, like, you go breeze through this. Yeah, but I'm not books. I'm not book smart, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a pick and choose. Okay, I'm ready. You got to pick a choose. 90 seconds. You got 15 questions. You got to answer them in 90 seconds. And let's see if you can beat the other two people's times. (laughs) You know, I mean, one one was okay. The other one's good, too. Now, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Uh, We're going to start this off 1 o'clock. And (laughs) let's go. If you could be any age for the rest of your life, what age would that be? 30. Cooking or being cooked for? Oh, cooking. Winning the lottery or your soulmate? Lottery. No, I'm birthday. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> soulmate. <laughs> birthday or Christmas gift? Oh, birthday. Favorite band or group? Prince. Ketchup or mustard? Mustard. Something you can't give up. My daughter. Love for my daughter. Childhood nickname. Kimmy. Don't anybody repeat that. (laughs) Comedy or drama? Comedy. Guacamole or salsa? Guacamole. Loud neighbors or noisy neighbors? Loud. Be a passenger or a driver? Passenger. Would you rather be a musician or a movie star? Movie star. <laughs> Celebrity crush. LL Cool J. Huh. If you're going to wear one color for the rest of your life, what color would that be? Blue. Ah, 119. Oh, she's in the lead out this bitch. Okay. She's in the lead. <laughs> oh, you had me thinking on some of those. I'm like, wait, what? What the heck? <laughs> you got 90 seconds. That's what's random. 90 seconds, right? I didn't want to have to pick some of those. <laughs> like, what can I not give up? I'm like, on everything? Like, <laughs> well, Miss Kinder, I, I, I tell you this. I want to thank you so much for coming on this podcast, making this very special for me. This is very important to me. And I'm glad you reached out. I am glad that you got a chance to tell your story. I'm so happy that you have honored me so I can hear your story and other people. I am very appreciative of you coming on. This means a lot to me. Uh, like, no, this is something that I want to do. I hope this can help out other people. Uh, like, no, but just like when I post on TikTok or Instagram, something like that, I, I try and post stuff that that's inspirational or or something out there that can help other people that I've been through or out, out there. Because you know what? We all need somebody. And we all got a story. As God knows, I got a damn ton of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I appreciate you coming out. Seriously. Thank you. Now, we all have too many stories. And I thank you for giving me the chance to let my voice be heard. So let me say some stuff out loud that I'm not used to talking about out loud um, in a format that made me feel comfortable. Um, and on a side note, Lou, I, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of you. I, and I've, I've been watching you on the internet doing your thing and I'm going to keep, I'm, I'm rooting behind you. you know, I'm here rooting Girl, for you. Don't, don't, don't get me all emotional up here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> to you, to, so you feel at peace and happy and okay with, you know, how things are going in your life. Thank so. you. I appreciate you. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. This is a- another edition of let's talk about it episode four be coming out 
and I guess Kim Kidder. I will see you guys later. Deuces. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. Enjoy this ride with me. Subscribe now.